I think we should start. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the grand book launch party of A Crate of Rags and Bones. Uh, this is a lead start release, and it has been authored by Ellen Nolan. So let us know a little more about the book. So as you know, this is a mixture of mystery and horror, and uh, it's a crate of rags and bones. So as Lee puts it, these dusty crates are filled with 20 dark tales that have been penned specifically to frustrate your slumber and inside insomnia, a stew of sinister intent as it were, a pinch of horror, a splash of mystery, two dashes of murder and smatterings of suspense have all been brought to a boil and congealed into this area of evil. Wow, what an introduction. But uh, let's hear a little more about the author. So, Ellen Nolan is the best selling author of the crime uh, thriller Blood and Brown Sugar. He was born in Toronto, Canada in 1966. He was the first Canadian born member of his family whose roots are set firmly in Liverpool. True to his generation X stereotype, uh, Nolan's restlessness eventually led him to settle in the Asian subcontinent. With India as his base of operations, Nolan joined a motorcycle club and crisscrossed the country with reckless abandon. After breaking several bones on a desolate mountainside in the Himalayas, Nolan returned to New Delhi and refocused on his true passion of storytelling. And he now lives in Bombay with his wife and two very naughty motorcycles, Wilhelmina and Elvira. So, Ellie Nolan, or as Great. we fondly call him, Lee, uh, please do share your journey of this book and uh, what you felt after writing the crate of rags and bones and what has been the response till now? Well, first off, let me uh, thank everyone for attending uh, tonight. It's, it's wonderful to see so many people that have come out to support me. And uh, a crate of rags and bones, what, what can I say? This collection of stories has been uh, put together over many years. Um, You'll learn a little bit more about it tonight from some other speakers, but some of these stories, uh, not, not all of them, I mean, <laughs> but a few of them uh, date back to the mid to late 90s. Um, they've all been rewritten and polished up for this collection, of course, but uh, any good writer will tell you they've always got a few stores of uh, stories tucked away in the bottom drawer. And it wasn't... Um, it wasn't something that I set out to do to create a collection of short stories. It was, it was actually an exercise that I, I sort of undertook myself to, uh, to sort of hone my craft. You know, uh, short stories are a wonderful exercise in, in, in brevity and uh, they do wonders for um, teaching you to, to say more with less. And it was actually, that was the original intent when I started penning some of these stories. Um, that and to see if, if any of them had enough substance to, to turn into novels. And after a while, I'd, I'd amassed kind of a, a collection of them. Um, and so it went forward from there. I'll let, I'll let Ruth speak a little bit more about that later. She's, she's got a tale to tell concerning that. But originally, um, it, it wasn't necessarily a novel that I was aiming to do or a collection that I was aiming to do. Uh, there was a couple of anthologies that put out on all, on all call and I, I I got in, I just got back into the groove of writing short stories and it was something that I, I discovered I dearly missed. And uh, one day I, I just sort of opened my drawer and, you know, there was, there was a dozen of them. So I thought, wow, you know, if, if I get a few more under this pile, there might be a, there might be a book in its own right there. So that's, that's how it went. Uh, and to my shock, uh, when I reread them and when I, when I went through the, the process of sort of polishing them and, and seeing if there was any, logical thread that tied them all together, I started to realize that the stories themselves all had an underlining current, under uh, writing current of a comeuppance or just desserts. And it, it surprised me because I didn't, I wasn't aware of it when I was writing them. But as I went through them again, I started to notice that each of the characters in each of these stories sort of gets what they deserve, whether it be um, good or bad. You know, it, it's brought about primarily through their actions or events. But it seemed to me that the, the message of the book would be that, you know, if all of a sudden there's uh, a vampire tapping on your window or uh, a specter that's haunting you, 
you know, maybe you've done something to deserve that. So I was uh, I was very surprised and, and well, pleasantly surprised that it, it turned out to be a, a general theme throughout the book. So how has been the response uh, to the book? Like overall, it's, it's just been released. I'm sure uh, appreciation is pouring in from all quarters. Well, uh, Anyana is going to be uh, speaking a little bit later. We can grill her about that. She's got, <laughs> she's got better numbers than I do. <laughs> but uh, I mean, as far as public response to the book, it's been uh, it's been wonderful. Um, as you said, it's only just come out. Uh, people have just started to read it. There's there's been a few people, uh, a few readers that follow me faithfully that sort of devoured it right away, and I've I've got some very positive feedback on it. Um, but as far as uh, sales numbers and overall popularity, time will tell. Wonderful, and it is an incredible journey. I'm sure lots of people are going to uh, stay awake after reading your book. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, so moving on, we'll be having the speaker. Oh, sorry. Just a minute. So we'll be having the speaker sessions. And our first speaker is Nigel De Silva. So with 13 published books to his credit, Nigel De Silva is a known name in the Indian literary world. He writes predominantly in the horror genre. His unique stories have struck a chord with a wide range of readers eliciting praise from various quarters. His publications include Penguin Random House, Rupa Publications, Ashit, Happer Collins, among others. And he has won screen adaptation deals on several of his books. He has been named as one of the top seven Indian horror writers to be read by UK's uh, Desi Blitz magazine. His books have been listed on Monster Complex and The Curious Reader, among other prestigious book lists. Considered as one of the forerunners of contemporary Indian horror literature, he has been covered by leading publications and is invited to speak at prominent lit fests around the country, including the Times Lit Fest, Pune International Literature Festival, Noida International Literature Festival, Shimla International Literature Festival, and Yayawar, which is a Jammu Literature Festival, among others. De Silva is also the founder and creative director of Lit Venture, a Mumbai-based literature festival that is for fostering the reading habit among young readers. So, we are indeed honored to have you here today and uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Chitra. Now, that was a very long introduction. You could have just said that you're an author and a screenwriter and whatever. You know, long introductions are not my forte, but okay, we'll go ahead with that. Then there is some music going on down here. Uh, can you hear it? I don't know. So, I think they are all celebrating Lee's book. So... <laughs> Lee, congratulations and uh, thank you for having me to speak or having me over to speak at your event. It's uh, kind of a thing like, you know, when I was also starting out, uh, even I had invited a bunch of authors to get together and to talk about my first book. So it's quite a moment of uh, deja vu for me, kind of a nostalgic trip because even I started out in the same way uh, with my initial books and the author's community is always very supportive of each other. I can see so many faces here who are known to me as writers. I've read their works. And uh, all of us here, fantastic authors, we have come together to celebrate your book. So with that, I'll just speak a little bit about uh, my impression of your book. I, uh, to be very honest, uh, did not get time to finish the book. There's a lot going on here in Mumbai. But I did skim through it. I did go through the stories a little bit and uh, you've done a fantastic job. I mean, we do need a lot of content in the horror space in India, to be very honest. Uh, horror is a genre that has a huge audience in India. I'm telling you from my experience, but there is a very less supply of it. So the supply demand ratio for horror is very skewed in India. Now, What's happening is when I started out in 2015 with my debut novel, uh, that was just the only book that was in horror at that time, that particular year. Uh, as far as I know, there were no other horror authors in the space, at least not those who were dedicatedly writing horror. 
there there were a few people but then they were writing other genres also and if they were writing books then they would come you know after a gap of several years which was not enough for the indian horror hungry audience so when i wrote i started out without any kind of um, you know reference point because i did not know whether horror would even work or whatever and what kind of horror books will be accepted in india from there to now it has been a journey of 8 years my own journey as uh, chitra so kindly read out 13 books that's even small because the number of books that came out this year in horror easily number over a 50 there are uh, there were around 50 horror novels books that came out in 2022 if i'm not mistaken i'm not giving in uh, very accurate numbers i know this is an approximation but then i keep track of all the horror stuff that releases in india so i have got a kind of idea of it whereas in 2015 there were just two or three horror books the whole year because if you even saw the amazon india horror charts in those years we were you know like flooded with stephen king and uh, rl stein and all the western authors there was nobody from india on the amazon india charts to now we are all there and i'm sure lee's book will be there up on the charts very soon i'm talking about amazon india best selling charts so we have come a long way and why this has happened is because we do have an audience horror is read horror is enjoyed we grew up hearing stories from our grandmothers and grandfathers and some of the stories were horror tales uh, my grandmother used to tell me boogeyman stories even at that time and she used to you know her best way her favorite way of telling me not to do something was to give me a kind of a scary example like uh, just to share a little anecdote with you uh, once it so happened that i entered into an argument with my mother and not just i was very very little okay just about 6 or 7 years old and i entered into the argument and i happened to raise my hand at my mother you know we do that as children so my grandmother was oh how did you do that but she didn't scold me what she did is that night she told me a story and now i'll tell you that story in very short okay so she told me a story that back in mangalore we come from mangalore this time uh, it's now an urban town so in mangalore where uh, our native was there was a similar kind of young boy like me and he lived with his mother they were the only two and mother used to work hard all day and look after this boy and the boy was growing up that was the only family they were for each other and one day what happened is the mother the uh, the mother worked hard but the boy was very disobedient very naughty very mischievous and uh, he would also like you know threaten his mother shout at his mother abuse her sometimes you know all those kinds of things a very bad son in short so one day after because of all the hard work and all the mother contracted some kind of disease and she died after she died catholic so she, so she was buried in the church graveyard now she she was buried there days passed and then what happened is one night one morning rather when the pastor went out to see in the graveyard he saw that the hand of that woman had come out of the grave it was like this and it was just like that and she my grandmother told me this was a true story okay so the whole village gathered around everyone wanted to see this woman that what's this woman about why has a hand come out she is dead she is definitely dead the hand is half rotting okay it's decomposing but it is up it's not going in the grave they called people to bury it inside properly again but no it came up again so then what happened is the pastor he figured it out he said that this woman has some desire that was unfulfilled and because of that you know her hand is up and what is that desire the pastor said that this woman feels that she should have corrected her son when she was alive because now he is very mischievous very naughty and he might take up some wrong habits so she never punished him she never scolded him she always you know like only poured out her love for him but because of that this guy was going getting spoiled and now the hand is up because she has to slap him and only when she slaps him will the hand go back so the boy was brought in a ceremony kind of thing and he was kept near the mother's grave 
poor scared child i'm i'm sure and the mother's hand indeed slapped the boy and after slapping the boy the hand went in and this was the boogie man story that my grandmother told me and after that i didn't dare to speak you know against my mother or anything of that sort for you know for the entire time that i was with her so yes we love horror stories we share them so many of them we know we read we love and i am talking about horror movies as well so your book please with all these short stories is such an interesting book because i was I, i read a couple of the stories and i could not like you know stop reading them in between because they have this kind of thing that you have to read them till the end also one last thing i'll share just before my first book was a full fledged novel maya's novel but i won't speak about it uh, because it's my policy to not talk about my book when i'm at the book launch of someone else but my second book that i wrote was a short story collection my third book was a short story collection and i wrote a couple of them i wrote i'm still writing short story collections because something that you said is very very true short stories are a great way to hone your craft and sometimes you know when you are tired of writing novels or you're not sure that you're you will be able to write a full fledged novel it's great to write a short story just to you know vent out your creativity and then you don't know what you might get so during one of my travels i was uh, waiting for a train a connecting train during my shimla trip i had gone to shimla i had just come out uh, uh, i had just devoted the toy train and then i was waiting for another train to take me to delhi overnight i had to stay at a railway station so it was uh, so i was in the waiting room and what did i do just a story you know some kind of story struck me sitting in the waiting room all night and i happened to write it by morning and that became a pub, one of my published stories in one of my books so you know short stories can strike you anywhere it's a kind of a spark of inspiration and then you just want to put it down on paper and uh, i'm sure you have collected them that way also observing people getting inspiration from all different kinds of sources and you yourself are a very you are a man who has traveled a lot you have such a lot of experiences so i'm sure your stories also have all those experiences built into themselves the essence of all those various places where you have stayed the people that you have met and it's going to be a fantastic read so with that i'll congratulate you once again i'll let the other speakers take over and may your book hit the best sellers charts very very soon i'll be there cheering for you lee all the way thanks Thank you so very much, Neil. It's uh, as Chitra said earlier, she was <laughs> having a fangirl moment. <laughs> I'm I'm just very honored to have you here because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of yours, and <clears throat> you may not speak about your work, but I can. It's uh, right behind you. It's the book you were talking about with your short stories, and I've read it myself. And uh, I, I aspire that uh, you know at some point in my life I can start to put out collections as. as creepy is that thank you so very much thank you for everything this is a fabulous collection lee do you are underestimating your own book it's a fantastic book i've read couple of the stories as i told you and they are unput downable i don't know whether people here have read them or not but we need books in horror and uh, this is raising the ante this is a good book uh, i'm sure that it will be on the best seller soon mark my words all the people here i'm telling you this is going to be on the best seller charts Thank you, Neil. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Neil. And uh, you have indeed been doing a lot to expand uh, the horror genre. Like people, uh, like you know, little kids also. They come to your storytelling sessions and workshops, and they also learn a lot. And uh, I'm sure all of us must have also indulged a little bit of storytelling in our schools. I mean, just to scare our classmates. I have done that. So I used to tell very creepy stories to my classmates, and they used to think like she's a weirdo man. so yeah so we have been doing a little bit of you know horror storytelling but uh, yes we do need to write and we do need to read more in that genre and thank you so much ningle it has been amazing having you here and uh, i've read your books of course and uh, right behind you that yeah i started with that actually your short story collection and then i moved on to your other books wonderful writing there's so much of diversity in your stories i just wish you keep on writing and you know just uh, the horror genre continues to grow 
that, that that book was entirely an experiment because I wanted to explore various subgenres of horror. So what happens in the Indian horror space is that we think of horror very um, narrow mindedly. We have a very single minded view of it that horror is just uh, chudels and dians and whatever. So um, the Ramses have spoiled it for us then. Of course, the other directors did it, but we don't see horror in the way it needs to be seen. There is so much of horror. And right now, speaking about the situation now, we have books which have, uh, you know, psychological horror in it. We have um, sci-fi horror coming up in India, you know, that never used to happen a few years ago. But at the same time, we are also not forgetting our roots because even the supernatural and monster horror is still there. So that's what I like about our horror space. While we are also moving forward, at the same time, we are not forgetting where we have come from. So we have horror coming from our mythology as well, like my book Yakshini was. And uh, at the same time, we are also writing about, uh, you know, very nice, cutting-edge, sophisticated paranormal stuff where people are using this equipment like ghost meters and uh, infrared thermometers and whatnot and trying to figure out whether there is ghost or not, putting this whole spin of paranormal being a parascience, you know, somewhere close to being a scientific uh, domain. So, yeah, that's it. That I, I love the way horror is shaping up in India. Thanks. One of you. And just to get a feel of Neil's anecdote, let me share a small video message. Okay. <laughs> so you actually have a hand coming up. <laughs> yes. That was pretty, uh, a very good coincidence. That's nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Neil. Okay, uh, so I'll be also um, exiting the meeting now because I've got another engagement as I told Lee. But you guys have fun and do pick up the book and see you again sometime soon. Maybe in person also, Lee, you have in Mumbai only. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take your leave. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Um, moving on. Now we have our next speaker. Uh, who's Ananya? Ananya has been on uh, these book launch before. I'll just introduce her again. Uh, graduation in journalism and love for books led Ananya to take up a career in publishing. With her experience of working on almost uh, over 400 books, she has come to believe more and more in the power of stories and the people who tell them. She's a vegan and an animal lover, loves to dance, tend to her pet plants, and often finds solace in solo traveling. Ananya, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you, Jitta, so much. I am very happy to be here um, and spend this evening uh, with, with you all. Um, I can I can say that I'm here representing Lead Star. I'm here as its publisher and all of that. But the uh, the the truth, uh, what would be more honest is that I'm here as as uh, uh, as someone who loves uh, Lee's writings, someone who um, loves is is but persona and and his enthusiasm for everything uh, so that's like you know more of a stance i'm taking in um in in this lovely event um let me just start with saying that you know sometimes in life uh for all of us it's very easy to uh lose perspective of why we do what we do it happens to the best of us uh, but then there are certain things that happen uh, or certain people who come and reaffirm and continue to reaffirm uh, the core of why we do what we do. And Lee um, has been one such author for me personally. Uh, the passion and, uh, you know, the life that he brings to his stories, it's, it's just crazy. It's actually even scary sometimes. Um, not the stories itself, but the passion, like the, the fire that he comes with. It's just, it it, it can get to you because the... Because there's so much that we have to do in order to match his energy to his enthusiasm and his fire. But then it's it's crazy inspiring as well because because in the end, it just brings the best out of everyone. Definitely the best out of me as well. So if it isn't already obvious that Lee is kind of like my favorite author to work with, let me um, add to that by saying is also super smart, super um, you know dedicated person. Um, a unique writer, truly, because he knows that his job does not end with writing. Uh, he takes up like immense effort um, 
from like you know minutest things like you know uh, the the author image the profile image on this book is very themed thematic like he took a lot of effort to to um shoot such a such a photograph so right from like you know small things like that um to all that he does to um uh, you know ensure that his voice reaches its potential he always goes above and beyond um the recent podcast on spotify that we're working on is just a testament of how sincerely he takes his storytelling um that was i mean i should have given a marketing disclaimer but uh, yeah if it, if you guys have not heard it please do um it's it's super fun it's it's on spotify and it's called the wandering hippie so um coming back to lee and his passion for his stories um the best part of you know creative rags and bones um is that there's there's 20 of them 20 of these wonderful stories um and with with the show variety of stories the book offers um each story can like satiate a different need in readers and story lovers there are slices of mystery uh, of or horror actually like i should say crates not not uh, slices um the book has crates of suspense crates of uh, history crates of thriller it just it spooks your cu- curiosity it spooks your fear it spooks your thrill um each transporting you to a different time a different place um each story is truly like a journey altogether and we are very glad that lead start could like you know publish this book work with him on this and we expect this to be much more of a success than blood and brown sugar that we already know is um so i'll just end with a note that i hope and i am as old and wise and experienced as lee i'm still attending his book launches and um talking to such a uh, you know wonderful and enthusiastic bunch of people as his publisher that might be his 100th book and i would love to be there so uh, looking forward to that's it thank you thank you so much and i i i can't overstate what it means to to work with you at at um at lead start and i'm just i just like to read the acknowledgments in my book here and i specifically mentioned ananya and i said you are my bridge between fiction and reality a true a true lilium interspenus thank you and for those of you that don't speak latin that means lily among the thorns and as we know the publishing world can be a little thorny at times and no matter how uh stressed or hyper I get and he's always there to chill me out and to make things right and to right the ship and to and very much keep me focused and on track as well so thank you very much for your kind words and I'm so glad you're here and I wouldn't want to work with anyone else either <laughs> my pleasure Lee absolute pleasure thank you absolutely wonderful Ananya it's uh, been great to see you take such personal care and you know Lee's book has been shaping up and we are in really integral to his journey thank you so much for being here and for sharing your thoughts with us uh our next speaker is ashisha i think she's here uh ashisha you there yep i am thank yeah. you thank you so ashisha chakraborty is a pm yuva author and a write india winner whose debut novel uh, miss adventures of a sales girl by rupa publications is loosely based on her experiences as a sales manager her second book is a work of historical fiction with national book trust tentatively titled the 13 year old queen and her inherited destiny she has written for various read romania anthologies and ebooks by women's web and inside iam her articles have appeared in the hindu and she is a star wars fan fiction column on silver leaf poetry a winner of kafia which is the delhi poetry festival she showcases her short stories on readomania premium a compulsive reader and an avid traveler she is an mba from the indian institute of foreign trade new delhi and a computer engineer from jamia millia islamia she has also modeled for a german photographer and likes to blog on her online diary the mind pin welcome ashisha we love you. to hear from you thank you so much for this uh, hearty welcome i don't think I mean I thank you so much and Lee was nice enough to invite me to his launch and uh, apologies for <laughs> being late so the perils of a day job but you know I I'll just start with one little anecdote of how we e met so because we met through the uh, uh, the writers group the first draft club and then I you know realized that 
there, there is so much, there's this diversity of age groups of kind of writers, the kind of genres, and it was overwhelming. And Lee is one of those people who will stand up for you and who will sort of, uh, you know, you reach out to them and it's very easy to talk to, a person who's easy to talk to. So let me now talk about his book. His book is actually very easy to read and sort of um, has a lovely feel. I know it's it's horror and it's not my genre. I don't read horror. I mean, the last horror I probably read was, uh, you know, the Goosebumps series by Ariel Stein and Stephen King probably. So I don't do these things. I'm kind of a coward person. But I think this book has those, you know, suspense elements, those thrill elements, which you feel like following up. And uh, of course, the horror bit is there. But in some, in you know, in certain um, horror parts, I mean, certain horror stories that I've read, things become a little too graphic, and it's kind of difficult to digest. Here, it segues very well. The writing segues very well. So, and and I love the crate idea. It's like the whole treasure crate, and you open it. Of course, the trailer would. I mean, the trailer is amazing. You know, it gives all those wonderful uh, feelings and you know those expectant feelings so yesterday I was watching a Wednesday and I felt like uh, shouldn't this be a 21 stories or 21 horror stories to read you know something like that so I really hope something like this happens you know and I don't know we'll we'll definitely be looking forward to some series some lovely series uh, doing the rounds with this book uh, lovely characters, very well etched. Uh, they make you, you know, keep going. Uh, I mean, of course, the language is perfect. That's that's there. It's really good. Um, and I like how, you know, each and every scene has a lot of description. So a, a friend of mine had actually told me, uh, he's, a, he's a critique, he's a writer. He said that, you know, I find your book is a little lacking in sensory description. So I don't know why I'm critiquing my own book here, but it's true. He just told me that, you know, your book lacks a little in sensory description. Try and give an idea of where things are or uh, where this is placed, where that is placed. In, in these stories, I think you will get a fairly good idea of where things are. So for example, if I read from the second crate, the carriage crashed along the rutted King's Road as the man and the black stallion followed. So every the details are there, you know, the detailing is there. So you can visualize it pretty well. So I love that. And I'm going to take that from you. I'm going to learn that from you, from your book. So kudos and hope it's a great, great uh, journey. I know it's going to be really good. Uh, lovely to see your spirit and happy to connect with this lovely group of writers. Thank you so much, Ashisha. And, and I, I have to say, it, it's when you mentioned uh, how we met through uh, First Draft Club, it was um, <clears throat> it was such a, a great group. That was a good group, and, and everybody sort of got along, and we shared a lot of ideas back and forth. And um, when she reached out to me and, and asked if if you know if if I'd read her book, and uh, so of course I'd, you know I'd love to, and I picked it up, and it took me a while to get to it because my TBR list is is ridiculously long, but I've I've actually just finished it, and you were honest about not being you know a horror reader, and I'm going to be honest about your book too. Um, when I, I looked at it, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a feminist manifesto, and I'm going to hate it. Right? <laughs> that was my initial. <laughs> But it wasn't. It was a good, strong character, and I absolutely loved her. And uh, it was such a light, breezy ride for me. I enjoyed it, and it made me laugh out loud, which I just don't do when I'm reading or watching movies. So kudos to you. I really enjoyed the read, and thank you so very much for your kind words and, and coming tonight. Thank you so much. I feel overwhelmed. You've made my day, and I'm really, really happy to be a part of your launch. I uh, love the book. So this cross-genre thing has worked for me. I'm going to read more horror. Thank you. Thank you, Ashisha. And uh, I do agree with you that uh, Lee's books have very rich sensory detail. You actually feel like everything, the smell, the sound, it's a, it's a complete treat to read. So I've been reading this book and I've already finished a few stories. 
and uh, when my husband interrupts me when i'm reading it i push him away just go away just go i don't even reply to him so there's no dinner there's no dinner time there's no you know i'm i'm losing sleep so that's the effect this book has been having on me so yeah uh, i i've been reading lee's work for a long time now but i think i mean the way this book uh, every story impacts you in a really different way so kurus ji really, you have really done a great job on this book because the husband has already read the book so i already know what happens in the stories <laughs> so you, you should let me enjoy okay moving on uh, we have our next guest uh, who is savesh tiwari so let me just introduce him uh, with over two decades of cross vertical vertical experience uh, mr tiwari has uh, spearheaded corporate communication for various brands like dlf dmrc ilnfs and served as an infrastructure expert for the delhi metro and the indian railways he founded a public relations firm called pr professionals which provides service to various renowned clients and uh, he's also a columnist for the uh, for various reputed publications and uh, has also been a guest speaker for uh, renowned institutions uh, has been a debate panelist and analyst for national news outlets he is the vice president of the public relations society of india and a speaker for the international conference on public relations he has been confirmed by various awards uh, uh, like the international leadership award uh, malaysia the social youth icon singapore the udyog ratna award by the institute of economic studies and the times of india icon award the best pr professional team in asia award by the japanese bank of international corporation the best pr practitioner award by the delhi government and the ministry of transport award by excellence and public relations by the public relations society of india and the public relations excellence award by live india wow that was quite an in, uh, introduction so uh, we honored to have you here uh, we just let you know, hear your thoughts on uh, lee's book thank you so much uh, i come from a era of ramsey brothers so i have always been bad in studies and so was uh, in uh, uh, my interest i have not been a vivid reader uh, but i remember ramsey brothers the music like ooh something like that If your uh, entire nerves used to get into a different action uh, the uh, cinematography and everything all the content which was being presented by the horror cinemas by ramsey brothers was fantastic and fabulous today we are uh, celebrating a man who brings the same emotion same music same sounds with his pen every story from his pen is crafted with meticulous attention to details and always evokes a sense of poignant familiarity and with every protagonist i must say in his uh, in the current indian context his work is very relevant and i am confident that his contemporary writings will strike the nerves of indian readers and audiences uh, i want to congratulate him for what he has done his earlier book i still remember blood and brown sugar the in the names are fantastic you you have to say Uh, a crate of rags and bones the moment you read you are horrified so you you everybody has to accept that so uh, uh, when i talk about his new book uh, which comprises of 20 dark tales that are a study in the human condition uh, his adroitly uh, tackles uh, complex issues which will keep readers thinking long after even when they have finished the reading uh, the book is an impeccable confluence of breathless suspense horror and spine chilling murder mystery so there are a lot of excitement which is there so i have not been i again admit that i am not a vivid reader but i have read it because i have i, I have not been i have been horrible in reading but i have always loved horror so that has and i have special connection with uh, uh, mr lee i have great respect for this person i have hardly seen anybody in this world who is a biker and he writes also who is a guitarist and he is an excellent writer so he 
understands the emotion. Uh, his inimitable writing uh, makes every story a new experience for the readers. I must say that each story is unique with yarn spuns across multiple timelines, uh, spanning numerous countries and continents, uh, from India to the New World, and from medieval Europe to Victorian England. He, he explores cultures as his treasure trove of wonderful characters take readers from the dark ages to dystopian future. I must admit that uh, he is definitely going to tickle the nerves. He's definitely going to uh, promote so many people to come forward and write because a person who is writing, who started writing very late, is and and he is writing such a great uh, um, such great books it's an inspiration every tale has been crafted to perfection i must say that they take readers on a journey across the inky black shroud of pure thrill and raw terror uh, a crate of rags and bones is a seamless blend of human emotions that sheds light on the corruption that lies in the shadows of society. That is very, very important aspect which you have brought out. And uh, I am sure that Ellen Nolan will keep you turning the pages as he narrates story of loss of misfortune, of tragedy and crime. So we all are excited. I am excited for the third one. And I'm expecting that before everybody starts commenting on what has come out in the second book, we everybody will be waiting for the third one. That is the excitement which you have brought. Congratulations, sir. With a lot of respect, I salute you for what you have done. Congratulations. Sarvesh, thank you so very much. Such kind words. I'm, I'm a little... Uh... I'm a little overwhelmed, to be honest, and and leave it to you when all I want to do is put out a book to scare people silly, and then you go and discover the social message that I buried deep underneath. I was trying to sink that all in subliminally, and there you go, and you just spilled the beans for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Well, yeah, short video Yeah, and indeed, people are howling for it on Amazon. So, uh, Lee, would you like to read out a book excerpt for us? Certainly, yeah, I, I, I'd love to. I've selected a few. Um, there was, uh, I remember during the launch of Blood and Brown Sugar, I, um, I struggled to find something to read because I didn't want to. I didn't want to give any spoilers. I didn't want to yeah. ruin anything. Uh, but uh, this time, I've just thrown caution to the wind, and I've, I've selected three short passages from three different stories, uh, just to hopefully to give you um, a cross section of of uh, the different types of stories and the different the different voices. I'm going to start with the uh, one of Ruth's favorites, and it's called uh, "When Horse and Hero Fell." Um, I won't give you I won't give you any context. I'll just I'll just let you sort of immerse yourself in the in the narration. Uh, I will say, however, that this uh, this particular story was um, inspired and based on um, uh, the ride of the light brigade, the charge of the light brigade, which is my brother is here. That's one of his more uh, one of his favorite poems. <clears throat> Cannons to the right of them, cannons to the left of them. Cannons in front of them volleyed and thundered, stormed at and shot with shell. Boldly they rode and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell rode the 600. Sour was the putrid earth, stained with bowel and blood. Dislodged from his mount, he call, crawled, finger flesh sinking deep to tear at the bosom of the valley floor, inching forward to escape for life awash in the wails of his comrades, calling to mother, calling to God, he crawled. The Cossack approached, thudding boots damp in the soil. They could be heard between the bellows of the cannons. 
There was to be no escape, no life, blackness for all in the valley of death. The Cossack drew his blade and swung it with a thirst for British claret. Honed steel met bridge of nose and the defenseless appendage cracked. That's a short passage from that. This next passage comes from uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> it's um, called Sour Apple Sunday. You're putting this. Is, uh, what happened? Hey, mute yourself. I'm, I'm reading here. All right. Can I have my big pillow back? Yeah, yeah. It seemed like hours. A light foam of sweat coated his brow as they trudged through the orchard in silence. Alex's impatience grew with every swing of her hips as she marched forward. On and on they went, deeper and deeper into the trees until the chatter of the others faded and the air became still and serene. The grove was darker now, denser, as less and less of the afternoon sun filtered through the boughs. They entered a small grove and Eva stopped. She placed her hands on her hips. With a smirk, she looked this way and that, and then at Alex. Well, she asked with raised eyebrows and backed herself against the trunk of a large apple tree. Alex dropped the blanket and went to her. His wanton thirst propelled him into the oasis of her arms. They kissed deeply, both with a desperate appetite to seek each other's innermost aphrodisia. She moaned into his mouth as he pressed himself against her, compressing her supple form between himself and the hardwood of the tree. They pawed at each other, grasping, caressing, as the heat of their embrace intensified. Eva's moan suddenly transposed into a shriek. Alex snapped open his eyes and tried to step away from her, but he couldn't. The surreal display in front of him gave birth to a shriek of his own. The offshoots of the apple tree had grasped the both of them. They were alive, moving, snaking around their thrashing bodies and binding them together. Horror mixed with dread as he saw the tips of two branches worm their way into her ears. She screeched out again as others punctured the skin of her cheeks and moved about under the flesh like wasps in a hive. He watched as blood poured from her mouth and the eye and eyes until the sting of his tearing, tearing flesh darkened his sight. There was a howl in his head, an overture of a thousand mistuned symphonies, a chorus of overlapping whispers. He struggled against the slither of wooden tentacles biting into his face, into his arms. Alex tried to force the blinding noise from his thoughts, but the harmonic disembodied, disembodied chants filled his mind. Do you wish to eat the forbidden fruit, the forbidden fruit to eat lustful, shameful, Lustful, eat the apple, the apple, forbidden apple, lustful fruit, shame, shame, eat it, eat it. Alex screamed as the crescendo of dishonor pierced his eardrums and crimson tears of disgrace ran from his blackened eyes. All right, last one. <clears throat> Do you want more? I could go all night. This um, this was uh, uh, this is called uh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh my goodness! Ah, whispers from the grave. The chains supporting the swing squeaked as I leaned as far back as I could dare. My little heart pounded. The reassuring grip of my father's hands on my hips settled me even as they drew me backwards to dizzying heights. Ready, tiger? Father asked. Let her rip, dad, I squealed. I felt the push and my sandy brown hair fluttered in the wind as he launched me. Blast off, I called and leaned forward. The sheer joy on my face echoed in peals of innocent laughter as the swing hit its apex and then, after a brief pause, began its descent. I loved Saturday mornings at the park with dad. I kicked my legs and pulled hard on the chain to begin the, to begin the return arc, wanting to propel myself even higher. The chain began hurting my left wrist and my hand, as my little hand clenched, it white knuckled. I looked down and saw the links 
had cut into the skin and a deep gash had opened. It was spitting blood all over my shorts and shirt. With a scream, I let go of the chain right at the crest of the bow and the momentum sent me hurling into the air. I hit the ground hard, tumbling, and the sunshine turned from golden honey to ink. I came to a halt on my back. The sun was on my face, but it was night. I was lying on my back in the playground, but I wasn't at the playground. My little body ached, but I wasn't little. I was an adult. My father stood over me, but it wasn't my father. The ethereal figure that stared down from above me was an old man with a craggy face. No, not craggy, fractured, smashed. It grinned at me with shattered teeth. Its crushed nose was flat against its face and one eyeball dangled from the socket. I rolled over on all fours and retched up the hot contents of my stomach. It reeked of stale whiskey and sour beer. I tried to stand, but kneeling was all I could manage. The graveyard, I'm at the cemetery, I must be, I realized. And I looked around to confirm it. The trees had been lovely when we arrived, emblazoned with brilliant hues of yellow and orange. Now, they were bare stumps, twisted and black, shrouded in a mist of iridescent green. So you've decided to quit, eh boy? Just like me, the disembodied voice whispered. Dad, it is dad. His voice was distant, but it was him, definitely his. I turned to see nothing behind me, just the moss covered headstone heading dad's, uh, bearing dad's name. Whoever or whatever had been standing over me had vanished. You and your brother both, just up and run. That's how I raised you? You didn't raise us at all, I howled at the headstone. You were just a lousy drunk. Not true, son, not true. I taught you to look after yourself, to be strong, independent. Bullshit. The pain in my wrist deepened. The cut from the chain swing. No, no, not the chain, the knife. It was a steak knife, remember? I rolled off all fours and sat on my ass, staring at the wound. Blood was running down my arm. That's not right. That healed. As I watched, the bright red fluid deepened into crimson, then black. It congealed, crusting into lumps, thick ridges that framed both sides of the gash. Lips, whining, pouting lips. Not bullshit at all, the cut whispered. The torn flesh moved open and shut as it spoke. Leave it there. Wow. And I think the expressions of uh, some of the people here were priceless. Like Rekha was... Okay, I saw her but like this. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's that's, that's what I was going for. That's, that's good. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, so I think we should go to our next speaker. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, after that amazing narration by Lee, uh, he's left us all in goosebumps. So let us now move to the next speaker, and that's uh, Preeti Nayak. Nayak. Uh, she's a writer, poet, and author of the Rakshit series books, an architect and urban designer. She's also a professor of architecture and urban designer uh, and urban design at leading institutions. A passionate traveler, she prefers taking the road less traveled and collect stories from every place. In a career spanning over two decades, she has delved deep into histories and stories that create places and cultures. This vast experience uh, inspires her stories with a special affinity towards conspiracies and mysteries. Her debut novel, uh, Scarred Roses, Rakshuk series book one, is a teenage detective mystery with a dollop of history, conspiracy, supernatural, emotions, and crime, and, and it is available exclusively on Amazon Kindle. So Preeti, uh, please do share your thoughts. You're writing uh, in the same genre. So. Yeah, I don't know how I'm writing horror because uh, those who know me uh, will know what sort of a scary cat I am. <laughs> so, uh, somehow it's a big, it's a running joke in my family that uh, my first book uh, happens to be uh, a book with uh, a ghost and uh, those who've read it, uh, they will know I've actually played safe. <laughs> so uh, less about me, more about Lee. Uh, 
So I uh, know Lee from the TCC group that uh, we've been part of together. And over time, he has become an author and a person I respect and adore. And uh, also about, uh, I, I read his uh, Blood and Brown Sugar. I read the book within uh, a day. Uh, and, you know, maybe I kind of just started it and finished it. I'm known to read pretty fast. But I'm really taking time with this one. And Lee, before you narrated, you should have thought, you know, like there are people who have to go to sleep now <laughs> at night. And I see to it that I'm surrounded by family and I read his book only during the day. So, uh, you know, because his writing is so vivid and uh, it creates such, such fantastic imagery in the reader's mind that uh, it all becomes too real, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, that's that's a huge uh, huge talent that you've got there, and also the, the same with uh, blood and brown sugar. So there again, it was it was safer that way. Though uh, the first chapter had me scared, but this one is another game altogether. But uh, I must also say that uh, Nitish's story uh, from the first grade has made me stop. Uh, looking under my children's bed. So <laughs> otherwise that used to be a standard thing. I would go there and I don't know why. <laughs> so you know that kind of <laughs> tells you how uh, how scared I am. But Lee, I'm really, really happy for you and uh, I wish you loads and loads of success ahead. And that's that's good for us also because we get to read the uh, such lovely stories. I'm still on the sixth one because I've been traveling and I was in Kerala and there is this uh, huge rubber plantation right behind uh, my parents' house. So once the sun set, I did not open my book. <laughs> I would read it exclusively in the afternoon <laughs> with my family around me. So I'll take it again tomorrow when I'm in college <laughs> during my break. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you so very much, Priti. <laughs> That's, um, well, I, I don't want to ruin any progress that you might have made, but the particular monster that I wrote about in Crate One is very rare. I mean, most of them bite your ankles as soon as you put your feet on the floor. <laughs> Sorry, but they do. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. And Scarred Roses, um, I, I, I admit that I, I haven't got as deep into it, but I have cracked the cover. And I, I've, from what I've read so far, I don't know. I think you'd make a pretty fair horror writer yourself. <laughs> I'm looking, looking forward to finishing it. Thank you so very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I'll, I'll take your, your leave now because I have a college reunion to attend. <laughs> and uh, these fellows are waiting for me. But I'm wishing all wishing you lots of luck once again and good night and thanks TCC for having me here. Thank you, Lee. Bye bye. See you. Thank you so much, uh, Preeti. Uh, Ashish sir, would you like to say uh, something? You can unmute you, yourself. Uh, you want me uh, me to say something? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, Lee, congratulations uh, for this uh, grand launch. And I believe I'm not a horror reader, so don't expect me to read this, that one. But I do have this, if you can recognize this. Is this someone you know? OK, so I'm currently reading this because uh, I had kept it specially for the new year. and. Uh, from whatever I've read, I've read around 100 odd pages uh, so far. And I, I think the writing is very uh, thrilling. And uh, it's hard for me with the workday to keep the book down. So I made it a point to read uh, 10 to 15 pages max in a day. Otherwise, I'll end up reading the whole book and ruining my you know, work day. Um, so the only ghost I would like to ever befriend is Casper. Okay, so don't expect anything more from me. And uh, Lee, certainly I don't want to have any vampire knocking on my door or on my window ever. 
So with that, I'd say uh, best of luck and uh, wish you a huge success with the second book. Thanks, Chitra. Thank you very much, Ashish. And I, I don't want to, um, I'm not here to ruin everybody's preconceived notions, but Casper, did you ever notice that at the end of the cartoon, he'd made a bunch of friends, but at the beginning of the next cartoon, he didn't have any friends again? You know what was happening during the commercials? Casper was satisfying his bloodlust, okay? That's why he, he'd befriend all these people and then he, well, I don't want to scare you, but that's why he didn't have any new friends at, at the beginning of the next, the next show. Okay, now that Ashish sir is sufficiently scared of even Casper now, uh, let's move to the next speaker. And this is a very important speaker uh, because uh, she is essential 3D success, okay? So Ruth Nolan, uh, she's wife of our author today, Ellen Nolan, a gold medalist in civil engineering from Guwahati University in 1998. She cracked the Indian Engineering Services exam the following year and was inducted into the prestigious Indian Railway Service of Engineers. She served the initial years of her field career in the Northeast Frontier Railway and then moved to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Transport, New Delhi on deputation as a deputy secretary, dealing with metro rail projects of the country. On returning to her parent cadre, uh, that's Indian Railway, she served as a director in the Ministry of Railways, New Delhi, and dealt with suburban and metro rail projects. Ruth has also received several awards during the course of her career, including a national award in 2017 for outstanding service. She now serves as the Chief Engineer in Mumbai Railway Vikas Corporation, a PSC of the Ministry of Railways. For recreation, Ruth enjoys cooking exotic cuisine, gardening, motorcycling, singing, and is also an avid reader. And she has to read through all of Lee's stories, I'm sure, and has to tolerate all those panic attacks and anxiety. Okay, so Ruth, please do share uh, something about the journey of Creator Rags and Bones. You know it uh, better than most of us. Thank you so much, Chitra. Can you hear me? Like, yes, yes, we can. Am I loud enough? Yeah, I have some issues with uh, my audio and visual as well, but we got it fixed like the last time. So again, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Lee, for giving me this opportunity to speak on your second book launch. Yeah, like Chitra said, yes, uh, I. I tolerate the entire process from start to finish. And most of you may already know that uh, I'm like his beta reader and also his essential first draft editor. So uh, do leave the writer, the author and storyteller. It appears that every time he has a book launch, they have to tell the story of how the book happened. You know? <laughs> So, so I'm no storyteller, but I will try again to share with you the story of how a trade of rags and bones happened. So as usual, just like Blood and Brown Sugar, I had to, the his manuscript had passed my reads and edits before we could finally submit to any, you know, publishing house. So the experience I had with a trade of rags and bones is very different compared to my journey with blood and brown sugar because in fact uh, lee had started writing some of these short stories well before he started writing blood and brown sugar his first story was uh, uh, a rock of a rock in the park and it it was actually uh, the first short story of this that i had read ever and i was really surprised uh, like as to how he could spin you know such a tale I was surprised because I had only read his blogs until then, uh, because Blood and Brown Sugar was not even sent then. And uh, I had only his blogs to read and uh, did, I should say. And I did not know that he, he even had a knack for writing fiction. So I, I need to say I love it. And you know, I'm also a big fan of horror and dark stories, whether it's in print or you know in movies so i'm a big fan we love watching horror movies together it's like the whole the whole uh halloween month is make it a point to watch a horror a horror movie every night 
<laughs> apart from other you know other times of course so uh, like i said while he was working on blood and brown sugar also he would be churning out these short odd short short stories in between and uh, during this course of time uh, some of them were published in various anthologies and one of the stories in this collection called uh, sabad of the kali dayan is actually in a digital copy of an anthology which is now on the moon like that's a big achievement i should say <laughs> and uh, what happens is with lee sometimes you know an idea would spark in his mind and then straight away he would have to put it to paper uh, or i should say the computer nowadays nobody actually write use the pen anymore so he even in the middle of the night he would be up and then he'll be typing away like a madman I think uh, Chitra and most of the authors here can actually relate to that. <laughs> I think you all do that, <laughs> and I have to bear the brunt of it. Like I'll be up, uh, uh, sometimes like he'll wake me up, you know, in the process, and you know I need my sleep, but he won't let me. <laughs> Many nights. <laughs> anyway, every time he finished the story, I would read it. We would provide him feedback, and I would edit his rough draft. And uh, the difference between uh, what I faced in A Crate of Rats and Bones and Blood and Brown Sugar was that since these were short stories, at least the project for me was an intermittent project. You know, it was an, a continuous process for me. And, I, and it was easier for me also because I did not have to keep track of a lot of stuff or information. I don't have to remember or make, make actual notes like when I edited when I read through blood, blood and Brown Sugar, I had to actually make notes so that I can refer back, you know, this page, that page, you said that. So for the for short stories, it was fairly easier for me. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> so uh, like that, it, so it happened throughout the entire uh, process and gradually his collection grew. And I think, uh, if I'm not wrongly, I think it was my idea that he compiled it in a book, you know? Because, because when he was writing these short stories, he had uh, no plan in his mind that one day uh, he'd convert it into a book. So the first idea came from me. And then after that idea was thrown in, in his head, he started polishing up the stories further and you know, making uh, uh, better, uh, more presentable. And then finally, one fine day last year, he handed over the entire compiled manuscript to me. And you know, uh, when when we when I had to work with blood and brown sugar, even then when he gave me the, the manuscript, I had just to keep it I had to just keep it aside because I did not have that much time in my hand to, you know, sit down and work because I have my day job. My like my day job is also like a night job. Our duty is like 24-7, five days a year. So I did not have that much time in my hands. But fortunately, for during blood and brown sugar, after a few months of the manuscript lying with me, uh, the 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 lockdown happened. So a few months of complete lockdown. Every day we could work, and in a month we had blood and brown sugar ready. And blood and brown sugar is like I think at least uh, twenty five percent uh, bigger word count than uh, Crate of Rags and Bones, so it was a bigger project also. But now for Corrad, there's no lockdown, nothing, and you know I I didn't have time in my hands for so a few months. It was just lying there with me, and he would nag me, but I had no time to do. I'll I'll do few pages and then again I'll forget about it and then last year in April uh, we went for an extended vacation to Goa we were supposed to be there for a month and by the second week what happened was that we took our dog out for a walk our evening walk it was slightly dark not very well lit our society and then I had a big fall and then I sprained my ankle. It was twisted and sprained, and I was homebound. Like 
<laughs> just I could not do anything. I could not go anywhere, and I was just bound to the to my computer. And there, in four days, we I finished uh, working on weight of breath and bone. So, like, what happens is that, like, every time I have a manuscript. For Lee, uh, to edit for Lee, I would need something, you know, to happen. <laughs> the third, the third manuscript that he has already given me is like even bigger and than blood and brown sugar. The sequel to it. So I don't know. Unless something happens again, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, this will take even longer. <laughs> so, of course, uh, uh, Great of Rags and Bones, Milagri Mitra, who our host here tonight, he had already also done an extensive development edit on it. So it was much easier for me. Understand? So within four days, like we could just uh, get it ready for submission. So after that, even when the time for submission came, uh, we were much prepared than we were for Blood and Brown Sugar because uh, Blood and Brown Sugar was our very first time and we had to do a lot of the research then. So, but for this particular book, we already had all the details available with us. I had all the my Excel file with uh, contact information of various publishing houses with me readily available. So, on second of May last year, uh, he uh, submitted his uh, uh, equate of rags and bones. He, he made his first submission and it was just three days short of, you know, a year since he submitted Blood and Brown Sugar. I have that date as well. It was 5th May 2021, he submitted, 2020, he submitted. Oh, it's been two years. Yeah, I'm sorry. Five days, five, three days short of two years. So again, same thing. We we have to go through the same, uh, you know, few re rejection. Some some showed interest, and in fact, there were uh, a couple of deals that almost worked out. Then, much to our delight, lead start came through with you know a two book deal offer. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> lead start, and then so the rest is history. I will say. And again, to that also, we start editor and back and forth. I think I went through the entire book again around three, four times, still finding some, you know, deep rooted mistakes or typos or some lingering inconsistencies. So I'm very diligent, I must say, like, if I can be honest. I want to read it again and again. I wanted to read the dumb copy also, but leave not let me anymore. He said that's enough. No more proofreading. So if anyone find any mistake, please blame Lee, not me. It's not the least start. <laughs> so, so, so that's the you know short version of uh, my story through the making of a crate of rags and bones. Though it was grueling. Oh, I must say, like the other day, I I told. I told my boss at the office that Lee's book is released, and then I casually mentioned to him, sir, you know, uh, I also edit his book. Then he said, mm, you must you must charge him for for your time. <laughs> the company must charge him for your time. But then I I told him, sir, I did not do it in the company's time. I did it during my vacation. I did it during the lockdown. <laughs> so that's a side joke. <clears throat> Anyway, I love reading uh, the book. I love uh, uh, every minute of uh, reading, beta reading, editing. Uh, I enjoyed it, in fact, because uh, while a plate of blood and brown sugar had lots of foul mouth, you know, bikers, and uh, that part of, uh, <laughs> you know, the crime filler was also entertaining. This collection, you know, it has so. It, Different from Blood and Brown Sugar, but it also has so many uh, unique characters, so many viewpoints, so many voices, so many plot lines, all in one small, you know, collection of books. And it, it was very, even I learned a lot. Like, I'm not a natural editor, like, just came, I just started doing it uh, for Lee. 
but even I learned through the process, I do my own research also about, you know, uh, how to, you all know, <laughs> all the authors here know the process. So I really enjoyed it. I think it has helped me also develop, uh, you know, my editing skills. And I have seen, like I said, I have seen Lee's creative process firsthand. I have seen when a story pops into his head. I have seen how he gets so excited when such an idea takes root. But still now, I, I'm still at a loss. I cannot understand where all these individual characters and tales come from, and also why they are so dark. Why are they so dark? I, I do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I I will tell you a few of my favorites, uh, my personal favorites. I I love every story, but my few personal favorites are uh, watching the wheels of revolution, while horse and hero fell, a rock in the park, like a, the the first one, an agreement among unsavory gentlemen. I just like the style, yeah, the language, the the period. Burial on Bear Island because it really touched me, and of course, a trade of rags and bones. These are my few personal favorites, but I know you will like them all. So I'm sure all of you will enjoy this very eclectic ensemble. It's a great collection: mysteries, thriller, dark drama, also horrific stories. But if if you are afraid of horror, it's not that the entire collection is horror. You know, it's a mix of everything so you will you will enjoy it as i say i so so i can unbiasedly recommend to everyone to please grab a copy thank you so much i'm so happy for you lee i'm so glad that your hard work has paid off and i want to thank all the good people out here who, and also who are not able to be online with us today for supporting us and collaborating with us so that we could see this day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruth. Uh, we indeed got lots of insights into Lee's writing journey and uh, what all uh, Ruth goes through when he's writing the book. Thank you, Ruth. I mean, it's it's a well-known fact, and I, I shared it from the rooftops that without you, I, I'd never be able to complete a single story. So without you holding the lantern of truth and light and guiding my way, I'd give up by what of years ago. So thank you very much. And don't worry about the next manuscript. Maybe there'll be, you know, a meteor strike or some sort of global catastrophe and we'll all get locked down again. So you'll be able to edit it. We can only hope. Well, let's hope not. And uh, let's proceed to uh, the interaction session. I'm sure lots of people have been waiting to ask Lee some questions and uh, you know talk about his book so anyone who has a question you can just uh, unmute yourself and go oh, take it from here yeah okay abhijit has a question so abhijit unmute yourself first of all i would like to thank uh, nolan sir that uh, for writing such a uh, nice horror stories and uh, I would like to say something different that uh, actually I used to live in a village in my childhood time. And there in the village, you know, the environment is very dark. And that time there was no light. So who lives in a village, they know that what is the feeling of ghost. So there used to be a, a, a man who used to come in the winter. The children like us and like to would like to tell the stories and that was the time we could feel the horror and we could feel the spine in our you know in our body so that was the time but when i read actually now i'm in the you know city so i can't find any ghost there because all the time everywhere is the light there so ghosts are busy and and one thing I would like to say that, yeah, Ramse brothers, well, someone said that Ramse brothers, uh, yeah, but I have a different uh, thought about it. I I was very afraid of ghosts, but Ramse brothers proved me wrong. And after watching their films, I really like to laugh at the ghost because that is not a ghost story. According to me, that is, think I, that is a one kind of comedy. So, so that is why I like 
to know a lot of story that can thrill me, that can make me, you know, make me afraid of ghost. And that is why I want to recommend one story that is uh, directed by Ram Gopal Varma. That is, uh, the film name is Rath. Maybe I think you could have seen the films, others also. So that was a film I really appreciate that this is really a spine cracking things. Uh, I would like to read your books, but right now I didn't read, but I would like to ask you one question. Your first book was not on the ghost stories. It was uh, about a motorcyclist or something. And then you transfer into different genre. So why? Actually, why you just switch from a common just crime or something to just this kind of ghost genre? Because why? Because you need to experiment all the genre or you have some specific reason for this? No, there, there was no real, uh, no specific reason. I mean, I'd, I'd hate to ever nail myself down into one particular genre. Um, I, I, I haven't in the past ever refer, referred to myself as a horror writer or a thriller writer. I'm just a storyteller. And when I get the idea for a story, um, I put it down and I'll, it plays out on whatever backdrop best suits uh, the story. So whichever vehicle I use to deliver the message of the story or the underlying theme of the story, it could be horror, it could be thriller. I've penned a romance um, for uh, the, the Creative Circle anthology. Uh, like, yeah, a romance. Like, you know. And recently, uh, uh, one of my short stories has just been picked up. And it's, uh, it's um, mythology, uh, Indian mythology uh, on a uh, Hindu goddess. And it had to be... Uh, uh, the focus was on Hindu goddesses and the story had to send a message of light and love and goodness. And I was like way out of my element. Um, but it, it, it's good to stretch your legs and try different things. Um, I, I know that I, I tend to lean towards the macabre, um, you know, wh whatever it is I start to write, it, it does drift in a, in a darker direction. And I mean, that's my true nature and that'll probably be more of what you see for me in the future. Um, but I, I wouldn't ever want to just nail myself down into one genre. It's all about storytelling and whatever whatever backdrop or whatever tapestry or whatever painting that you use to deliver the story is is fine by me. So I think your next uh, venture is going to be a mythology or romantic. Actually, the the next uh, four books are, are, or three books are laid out. And in no particular order, they're another crime thriller, uh, dark historical drama, and then a good old fashioned horror. Oh, and then another crime thriller. So yeah, four. <laughs> well, that's a great- I, 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 I agree with the fact that, you know, you don't really think about a genre if you write a story, you just write a story. I mean, at least for me, I just write a story and then I see in which genre it fits into. So I, I, I think, you know, if you think of a genre too much, it impedes the writing. I agree with that. Okay, so moving on. Uh, uh, anyone else has a question? Arya, Rihanna? You can please unmute yourselves. Uh, yes, Arya, go ahead. Um, my voice is audible. Uh, yes, you're audible. Okay, so I want to ask Lee that as a storyteller, like he creates many characters. So which one of the character does he relates to the most, like he's most closest to when creating it? That's a, that's, that's a, a very good question. I've been asked that before. Um, and I always struggle with it because each, each character has a, has a little drop of my blood, you know, um, try as you may uh, to suppress um, yourself when you're writing a little bit of yourself always leaks out um, there's there's been some characters that <clears throat> I feel very very close to um, the problem is Aria, I tend to kill them off so I, 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 I can't get too attached to them you know I, but um, Alex Alex Crossman from Blood and Brown Sugar I mean if I had to if I had to put a you know stick a pin in it 
I'm, I, I'm very close to him as I am with uh, John Reeves in blood and brown sugar. He's if, if there's a, if there is a particular character that's uh, fashioned after myself, I, I would have to say it's John, John Reeves, but um, I love them all. You know, I love them all. I love, I love terrifying them. I love hacking off their limbs. I love, I just love them. Don't you? Okay, thank you for the answer. Thank May you, I thank you, question? May I ask another uh, question? Yes, I wish it's good. Recent you just wrote 20 stories uh, on horror or maybe others. So any story that you really feel in your life, that's that story you witnessed some somewhere. Or... You're asking if any of the stories are real or something. Uh, if yeah, you're... are they are they drawn from your real life experiences? Yeah, all of them. I mean, the, everything I write, um, everything that I do, you know, every motorcycle trip I take, every time I travel, every food I eat, every time I jump in the ocean, I, I, I do everything with a writer's eye. I'm, I'm always. Um, I'm always consciously making making notes or subconsciously, pardon me, making notes because that, that stuff creeps up later on. So it, it might be an abstract point. It might not mean anything in particular to the plot or the subplot or the storyline, but some, some personal experience will inevitably creep into the story. You know, uh, someone could be getting chased down a dark alley, chased, you know, by a rabid, rabid dog and they're about to, you know, be attacked by a dog and he'll look up and he'll see a red neon sign. And if that sign I'll have seen somewhere in New Orleans 15 years ago, but when I describe it, that's where it comes from. You know, so, I mean, there's always, uh, there's, there's always a little piece of me or some little piece of personal experience uh, within everything that I write. Um, as far as major plot lines and, and, uh, you know, stories based on something that actually happened to me, I'd really rather not say, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> because you never know when the police are listening. Yeah. And if okay. You chance, uh, if we get a chance to write a mythology in future of on Indian Indian mythology, what God would you choose to write up on? I'm a Cali guy. I'm I'm into Cali. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, moving on, I think, uh, who, who has a question? Uh, who's next? Rihanna, Rekha. Uh, can I go next? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hello, uh, Nolan. It's a pleasure to meet you and talk to you here. Uh, like in the, I've read your blood and brown sugar. I am also a bit scared, covered, uh, to read uh, the book. Uh, because you are very descriptive. I've read from Blood and Brown Sugar, I came to know how a Delhi airport looks like. And after the accident, you know, how that leg ripped off, you know, that description just gave me goosebumps. So with that descriptive mind, uh, was there a difference between writing for Blood and Brown Sugar and this, this story, Crate of Rags and Bones, with your descriptions, you know, were, did you have to process in an other way, any other way to describe the whole story? That's, that's a great question. And um, <clears throat> all, all joking aside, um, yeah, with, with Blood and Brown Sugar, um, most of those, um, aside from the leg being ripped off, <laughs> but most of those experiences were things that I'd, I'd experienced firsthand. Um, I've had a lot of comments from people <clears throat> Uh, when I describe the, the ride uh, through Lenavla, through the Ghats and into Lenavla, people say, wow, you captured that so perfectly. And I'll say, well, yeah, I've done it 20 times, you know. So, um, but a, a lot of the stories within uh, Crater Rags and Bones, I, I deal with, with places that I haven't been. And uh, I'm, a, I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a dog for research. Um, so I'll do, I'll do an awful lot of, of reading up on, on things before I commit to it on paper. Um, but yes, it was a completely different experience. I mean, a, a lot of blood and brown sugar, I just shot from the hip because I was very familiar with the surroundings and uh, very familiar with, you know, the lifestyle and that sort of thing. Um, but with creative rags and bones, uh, I found myself 
in some tricky situations. I mean, I've never been on a train going through the Carpathian Mountains, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm determined to, to make things as very, um, you know, as so many people have very graciously pointed out, I, I, I'm meticulously descriptive. And so in order to be that way and to maintain that level of, of sort of narration, you got to do a lot of reading, which is ultimately what I, what I did to, uh, like, thank goodness it was uh, it's short stories, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it was, a, it was a vastly, vastly different experience in that regard. Thank you for the answer. Thank you, thank I, you, Rekha. Sure. I think. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, yes, good. Uh, okay, so uh, Rihanna, Rihanna had a question. So uh, Rihanna, please unmute. Good evening, yes. everyone, uh, especially Nolan sir. So I have a question. Like, who is your favorite author? Oh my goodness. That is such a uh, wow. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna th throw a few names. I see my 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 gut instinct. I love the outlaw writers. I love outlaw writers. Um, you know Hunter S. Thompson. Um, I love uh, Kerouac, Oscar Wilde, uh, Hemingway. Um, you know, but I, I I'm I'm deeply influenced by contemporary writers as well. Uh, you know uh, Richard Harris. I love. Um, uh, well, Anne Rice, I was a huge Anne Rice fan and, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't nail it much like my writing. I don't, I don't really constrict myself when it comes to, to reading either. And I, I read as much as I can get my hands on. And I love, a you know, I, I love a, a really wide variety of authors. I truly do. I, I just, I just started, uh, HP Lovecraft, um, to my horror, I haven't read, read any H.P. Lovecraft since high school. So I, I purchased a, a collection of short stories and I'm, I'm back into that now. And, you know, and, and, I, and I love reading, uh, you know, my peers and my colleagues and, and you know, quite a few people uh, uh, that are here tonight. I've read their works and I love all that as well. So it's, it's very difficult for me to nail, nail down one. But if I, if I had to say most influential, um, it would probably be uh, Harris, Hunter S. Thompson, and S Stephen King. I would, I hate to see stay King because, um, you know, it, it's, he's the master and, and it's a very expected thing to say, but, uh, he is, he's, he's the King. So it, it's, it's hard not to let, it's not, it's hard not to have him influence your work. Uh, have you read, uh, uh that, Murder of Roger acquired by Agatha Christie. You know, I, I'm I'm embarrassed to say that I'm I've I've not read any Agatha Christie, and I don't know why, and I don't know why, but I, I, I I'm I, I should and shame on you me. Should. The, yeah. <laughs> you should. Yeah. You should. You're you're calling me out here at my own book launch, and I'm I'm glad you did now because I'm going to have to do something <laughs> about that. Uh, I only I only just read the the Haunting of Hill House. You know, recently, which which is you know, you kind of have to read that if you're going to write horror. But uh, so I, yeah, I've I've, I've let a few things uh, lack, and um, Agatha, Agatha Christie is one of them. But I, I'm going to make up for it. I promise. Next book sure. launch, you can ask me that question. I'm going to say yes, I have. <laughs> sure. So, what oh. is your upcoming genre of the new book? Uh, I've I've got to I've got to be careful here because. Um, you know, my, my, uh, my manager here from, from lead start is listening. So uh, she's going to hold me to it, whatever <laughs> she'll be, she'll be sending Just me emails a tomorrow. Bit hint you can give to us. <laughs> well, they, the, probably the next release will be the sequel to blood and brown sugar, um, blood and Bombay black. That's uh, that's pretty much ready to go. Um, which is, again, it's another crime thriller. It's just in a, a continuation of the characters from blood and brown sugar, the ones I didn't kill off anyway. And then uh, shortly after that, I've, I've got a dark historical drama, uh, Mad Dog and His Englishman. And then there's uh, Pirate Air. Uh, so there's there's a couple, but they're all they're all sort of in the dark thriller sort of ring. Thank all you right. So my thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, Lee, for answering all the questions. And I think we have a couple, just a couple of people who would like to Maybe say a few things. Uh, one, I would like John to say a few things, if possible. 
John, if you just unmute yourself and say a few things about the book and Lee. Uh, yeah, Lee, I basically, I just want to say congratulations. Uh, you've been writing since you were very young and you've only just the last few years got into publishing. I just wondered what was the trigger that got you to pursue the uh, pursue, pursue your writing career? That's, that's, you know, John, uh, um, yeah, I, I was, I was speaking with somebody the other day and they said, when did you first start writing? And I, and I realized that you yeah, haven't, I've been knocking away this for a lot of years. And uh, what was it? I think more than anything, it was um, India definitely inspired me to write and to publish. I think because uh, for the first time, I had a story that I really had to tell. I mean, I, I, there, there's a really finite line between writing for yourself and, and writing for an audience. And any good writer will tell you, you write for yourself. You don't write for anybody else. You write because not to write is suicide. You never write with an audience in mind. I mean, there are writers who do that and, and kudos to them. And they, they want to catch a wave or write something trendy or, and that's fine. You know, whatever, whatever gets you through the night. But a good writer will tell you that when you're writing for yourself, that's when your best work comes, comes to fruition. And I guess that's what I was doing. I was writing specifically for myself and, and not to sound vain, but I, I think I, I got to the point where I realized, you know, this, this is really good enough for someone else to read. And, and those first steps um, into, into sort of, you know, entering into the publishing world and throwing your hat into the ring, it's, it's scary. It's a scary thing to do. And I think that probably held me back a lot of years as well. Uh, I mean, I, I did publish a few short stories in the late 90s. Um, but as far as a novel or really taking the plunge, I think it was the whole experience of, of getting, coming to India, uh, seeing the country, having to get that out. And it came out in the form of blood and brown sugar. And, and then realizing once it was done that, you know, this isn't bad and maybe I could submit this, maybe I could go somewhere with it. So mm -hmm. I, I guess it was a combination. It was like the perfect storm. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. Cause uh, like I said, I remember you writing for hours when you were a young guy. And you just seem to enjoy doing it, you, you know. And I'm thinking, well, why are you doing all this writing if you're not getting it out there for everyone to, to read? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm, glad, I'm glad you made that step. It's very good. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Thank you. You know, Stephen King once said that um, you, you, you don't write for money because if you write for money, you're a monkey. And you don't write for fame because if you write for fame, you're a monkey. You write because not to write is suicide. You know, and when I first heard that, I thought, OK, it was a little bombastic for me, but I get it now. I understand. And and yeah, sometimes I do. I still I have I have scores of manuscripts and uh, little chunks and bits and pieces and story ideas that I that I happily type away just for myself. And I know they're never going to go anywhere, but it's just the process of writing that, that I enjoy. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, John, for that uh, question. Yeah. Amazing to hear from him. Uh, next, I would just I like to ask uh, Nidadri to wrap up. Uh, like, just say a few words. You have known, uh, you're acquainted with Lee's work. So you're the best person to actually uh, put in concluding remarks. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, just to wrap this event up, I'd like to say uh, just a few words, not take too much of time. Uh, the first is I, I read the book very early on. I think uh, I think uh, it was at this very nascent stage, and I think just after Ruth, I think was the only other person who had read the book by that time. And Lee had asked me to you know look over the book you know from an editorial perspective. So uh, I'm not going to much detail, but I'll say this: uh, being a professional editor, I'm constantly dealing with stories and 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 you know books. But there have been a very few books. I think there have been only two books so far, which have made me stop and clap. One, being completely unbiased, was Linger When You're Gone. 
uh, uh, that was one book that really made me, you know, clap. And the other book was this. I remember it was around 2.30 or 2.45 at night and I was sitting at home and, and I won't name which story, but there was a particular story and Lee knows about that because I told him. And when that story ended, I, I was sitting alone in my room working and I stopped and I clapped. And I stopped working for that night because I thought, okay, let's not dilute my mind with anything, just anything more tonight. This, this is it. This, this story is amazing. So there have been very few books which actually make me applaud, you know. And I'm just sitting in my room alone. There's nobody even to see me that I'm applauding. But I just applauded. I clapped. It was so good. And as, you know, a lot of people said, Lee's writing is very descriptive. And when you read the book, you understand that the author is a person of the world. He has traveled. Because you don't get the you know, sceneries, you don't get the descriptions just by sitting at home. You know, to experience them firsthand. So you understand that Lee has traveled. And a lot of these stories are based upon his personal experiences, or at least the settings are. So yeah, it was an amazing book to work on. It was an amazing book to read. And uh, thank you, Lee, for writing the book and looking forward to the sequel of Blood and Brown Sugar. Thank you so much, Nal Adrian. I, I can't understate, um, and I, again, I'm gonna refer to the acknowledge, acknowledgements of my book where I thank you. And I, I said that your sharp eye and thoughtful insights are invaluable to me while writing this novel. And I, I, can't, I can't understate that. Um, as I, I'd worked with a professional editor on Blood and Brown Sugar, of course, but I hadn't, I'd never worked with uh, a professional editor, editor who was also a friend. And that relationship that we'd formed through the creative circle, you know, long after our monthly meets ended and the cameras were off and most people had left, you know, a small group of us would, would hang around and Miladri and I would talk for, oh, just talk about everything, about books, about this, about that. And, and, we, and we see eye to eye on so many things and we, um, and we agree uh, on so many principles of, of storytelling and the craft. And it was just, uh, it was no surprise to me when you sent that manuscript back that uh, the details that you had caught and the things that you had caught and the refinements that you had suggested uh, um, were so I, I didn't even have I just you know hit accept I didn't even have to think about it because they were they were just uh, they were just perfect for the book and and I I, I really want people to understand that you you were uh, you know a, a huge contributing factor to the final product so thank you very much for your kind words but you know take a bow yourself <laughs> thank you thanks a lot it it means a lot coming from someone like you you know because I I, I always say to Chitra that. The one of the most accomplished authors that we have in PCC is Lee Lolan. So thank you very much. Okay, so that brings us to the end of tonight, the event of the book launch of a creative of Rags and Bones. So and as you can see in the screen, the, the book, book is, is available, available on Amazon. It's available worldwide. So please do get yourself a copy. This is not something that you can miss. And uh, please do recommend it to your friends. Uh, also like, share, and subscribe to this video. Um, spread it around, spread the word around so that more and more people uh, come to know about the making of this book as well. So, and uh, thank you so much, everyone who's been there with us today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. It's been a wonderful evening with all of you. And I really hope, as Neil said at the beginning of the event, that a crate of, uh, that a crate of rags and bones uh, hits the bestsellers list. And more importantly, gains uh, you many, many fans, many readers, who appreciate the content of this book and uh, gains your lo loyal fan following. Uh, so Lee, last words, please uh, share with our readers. Uh, I just wanna thank everyone so much for coming. I mean, the, the, the faces that I see here um, are important to me. And it, it, the support, you, you can't ever understate that how important support is to writers, I mean, um, Hemingway famously said that it, oh, it's easy to write a book. You just sit at the table, cut your wrists and bleed all over the page, you know, and that, and that's what it is, you know, and it, it, it's such a scary endeavor to put yourself out there. And when people rally to your support, uh, it, it's such a wonderful feeling and it's the validation is amazing. And it, 
it just makes me feel fantastic. So thank you all so very much for coming. Thank you for all of your kind words. And, you know, don't just buy one copy, buy two. All right. So uh, again, thank you everyone for coming in. Thank you everyone who's watching this uh, video. Uh, thank you, Lee. Uh, good night. Good night, everyone.